Welcome back, everybody. For today's Jay's Plays video, we are going to be covering Drag Troad from the 2005 format. This is a deck and list that I'm very proud of. It borrows very heavily from Alex Bessario's um, World's 2006 list. We just took it back a year and made some adjustments for the meta. Um, all in all, like I said, I feel very good about this list. I think you can make a few arguments with the deck. The one change after playing the games is I would probably go down to three Rocket Sneasel EXs and go up to two Rocket Scyther EXs. Just in this format, there is a lot of Nidal Queen and the occasional Rock Lock deck, and that Ra Rocket Scyther EX is going to be money in that matchup. I also think that while Dragoff is exceptionally good, um, I think you can get away with a slightly smaller number in the 2005 format versus the 2006 format. Um, the 3-3-2 Dark Dragonite line plays fine, I am going to say, though, in the Games where you do prize the Dark Dragonite, you do need to be a little bit more careful um, with where you're attaching energy and um, playing of your Dark Dragonite. I think you can make an argument to play either a third Dark Dragonite or a Pokemon Retriever in the deck, but I wouldn't want to really drop anything I have in there for it. And then the last thing would be Switch. Um, I think three Switches play fine. If you are running into a lot of Pow Cham decks, you're probably going to want either a fourth Switch or... Um, and in combination with probably a second Scott. Other than that, let's just go ahead and jump right on into the games. All right, so pretty solid opening from us. We're going to have the turn two Dark Dragonair, which is going to lead us to the turn two Dark Electrode, and ideally the turn three Dark Dragonite. Would love to see a, um, would love to see a Lynette's Net Search in the hand, but other than that, I can't have any complaints going first on top of all of that. So we're going to get a decent start on our opponent. Opponent also throws down the first stadium. So that Desert Ruin should win out. Now, I'm also feeling pretty confident. Um, one of the biggest, uh, one of the scariest things in the in any sort of Swamp Bird matchup is just like a turn one or turn two Swamp Bird against something that's fighting weak. And my opponent just doesn't have it here. We are going to get the turn three. Dark Dragonite, so really, really solid opening for us. Um, decent copycat there, got a couple of basics. Nothing at all that I can complain about. I also know that Rocket Scythe 3X along with Desert Ruins is going to be money in this matchup. Opponent just doesn't seem to have a whole lot going for him. A little unfortunate that we did draw the Dark Dragonite, but considering the fact we got the VS Secret for the copycat, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. It was also very fortunate for us that we, we were able to play our entire hand down um, off that copycat that we drew six cards and they were all live cards. Yeah, we're going to go ahead. A little, I have a little bit of concern for a, um, like a crystal shard or something, but even that wouldn't be enough to knock me out. He would need like, um, yeah, I just don't think there's any combination of cards. He would need like, a rare candy swamp bird, two energy, and a crystal shard to knock me out. Opponent just doesn't have it, though. Uh, we're just holding that VS Seeker. We're in such a dominant board state, and our opponent has such a small hand size. Yeah, and then we just, uh, opponent just struggles to set up a little bit there, and we're able just to take our really good start to um, a, just a consistent win there. All right, game two. I'm feeling pretty good here. We not only have that Rocket Sneasley X at the start of the game to disrupt the opponent, we also have um, the Lynette's Net Search and the Rocket's Pokeball to get set up, that Dark Energy as well. Um, <clears throat> Gardevoir in general should be a pretty favorable matchup for us, but the fact that our opponent didn't actually open with the Dunsparce kind of makes me think that maybe he's new to the format. Um, really no reason to drag off anything on the bench. That Wobbuffet we can't hurt. And I'm not going to put the Dunsparce in the active spot. Yeah, the Professor Birch um, is just making me feel a little bit more confident in this. The double Dunsparce is a little unusual as well. Go ahead. We just get the Lynette's Net Search. Really just showing how strong it is. Um, that Rocket Sneasley X being resistant to Psychic is just going to be money in this matchup for us. Combined with Desert Ruins, we should have a relatively easy time either. Um, taking out Gardevoirs or Gardevoir EXs. Opponent asks us if he if we think that if becoming a teacher is worth it. Um, yeah, I think that totally depends. I think money wise, um, probably not. If you want to do more to help society, I think that's uh, I think being a teacher is a very worthwhile goal. 
All right, so opponent scoops there just doesn't seem to have a whole lot going for him. Thielen at this point is probably a Ludi Cargo deck. Um, maybe like a Powtar, but um, we have that Lynette's Net Search, so that's going to be super strong for us. We also have the turn two Dark Ring, just really showing the strength of our energy there, and we're going to go for it. Um, this can be a little weak. I've got to be a little concerned about um, Scramble Energy in this, but we just have such a dominant board state here. Um, that I just really, really, really wanted to um, push the pace here, not give our opponent that time. Like I said, you can make arguments for or against this. I'm not going to say one is right or wrong. Um, we're going to go a little bit slower here. Take the Dark Electrode. Once again, this is incredibly risky, and you know I'm not going to say it's not. Um, I do think that having that Rocket Sneasley X and R Energy insulates us a little bit. But yeah, I definitely made a very questionable play. Small misplay by me. I do think I could have Evolutionary Light there first. Grab the Dark Dragonite. Um, I guess the argument would be that if I drew into the Dark Dragonite or Dark Dragonite, I could Evolutionary Light for the other one. Um, did draw a lot of energy off that, which is unfortunate. But we're going to go ahead and have that Claw Swipe. It's not uncommon for Ludi Cargo decks to run Crystal Shard, so I do need to get a, be a little careful here. Um, I wasn't watching the uh, the video when I was watching the replay there, so I don't know if we prize the second Dark Dragonite or not. We do have the switch. We are going to be able to get the one-hit knockout on it, so I am feeling pretty good at this point. Um, the Dark Electrode is just money in this matchup. If we are able to find the R, um, I'm sorry, the Rainbow Energy. Yep. Plays the Happy Dance Ludicola. I like that in this format. I think that's good in a lot of matchups. Some will play it, some won't. Hits, for, hits us for 90. We get the Stevens for 6. Very lucky draw for us. We uh, have that Stevens in a large bench. We hit the switch, but at the exact same time, um, yeah, I really wanted that Rainbow Energy. I, I'm also going to say playing down the Desert Ruins here could have been a mistake. Um... There's a decent chance our opponent just plays four Battle Frontier, and we would have wanted to hold those. Um, I try to insulate myself a little bit with that. You can kind of see how I'm um, placing my energies. Where essentially, even if you knocked out the Active Sneeze, I'd still have a bench one. I still do have that second Desert Ruins in there. But yeah, that was a questionable play. I think I'm just trying to insulate myself a little bit from late game Rockets admins. So pros and cons to it. Has the Scramble Energy, has the um, Pokemon Reversal. And I'm going to take a second here and and um, here, we'll wait till we get back to the board. But I'm going to take a second here and talk about this because I, it took me a little bit to realize how he did this. Um, but a Hooded Man always plays some really you know cool decks, some really cool innovations. And I don't think he played Stadiums. I don't think he played Desert Ruins. I don't think he played Battle Frontier. I think instead he just opted to play like three or four Pokemon Reversal. And... Depending on the matchup, that could be right, that could be wrong, but I think that is a, a really cool idea for uh, Ludi Cargo in the 2005 format, just to forego the stadiums and just opt to play um, like high Pokemon reversal counts. I'm going to say there's nothing in the 2005 format that hurts Ludi Cargo, Desert Ruins, Battle Frontier, neither do anything. You're essentially, you're not playing stadiums to like as a counter like you do in 2006, like counter Curse Stone, but essentially in 2005, you are just playing it to um, disrupt the opponent. And Battle Frontier is only good against some decks, and Desert Ruins is only good against other decks. And Desert Ruins, or Pokemon Reversal, is just good against all decks. And I think that's the route that he took. So we do have the second Dark Dragonite here. Going for that Darkness Navigation. Trying to get our hand down. Yeah, we're, we're just trying to insulate ourselves as much as possible. He would need... It wouldn't be unrealistic, but it would take a lot for him to get another Ludicolo. Um, I think I'm trying not to give him a good copycat. But I do think there was an argument there to um, grab the Voltorb as well. Yep, just checking my math, making sure I'm going to have enough for the knockout. Always double check that. You don't want to be 10 off there. That is, That could be game deciding. 
So yeah, feeling pretty good, have a lot of energy. I could still be very weak to a Rockets admin battle frontier, so I've got to be very careful there. Opponent does get the paralysis flip. We're gonna go for the Stevens. We do not get it. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna diversify our energy as much as possible. We don't wanna we're gonna leave the single dark on the active just so um just so we're not completely defenseless. Um, you know, we know he plays high reverse count. Wouldn't be uncommon for him to play like a pow hand extension in this. So gonna diversify those energy as much as we can. Beautiful admin for us. I don't think we could have drawn any better off that. The dark, yeah, that dark metal energy top was pretty darn unfortunate. Um, I do think that was probably a mistake. I probably should have played the rainbow just in case he admined me again. And then I could, um, um, then I could have, uh, um, darkness navigation for the dark metal energy. Yeah, and at this point, I'm feeling pretty confident. Um, and this is a pretty um, common strategy you can do with Drag Trode to kind of insulate yourself later stages of the game. I go down to one prize. I basically set up two Rocket Sneasels, knowing my opponent can't deal with both. So even if he gets a knockout on one, the other is going to be a guaranteed knockout. I don't think he has anything in his deck. Because even if he knocks out the active, we're still going to hit for 30, um, 80. We're going to hit for 100. So... We're pretty much in a guaranteed win spot here. I don't think my opponent's going to have any way to play around it. Checking what he's got. He's also played three rare candies. Even better for us. I think he's got... He might have three low tad in there, too. Yep, has the POW hand extension. What are we bringing up? Yeah. He misses the paralysis flip. We retreat. Go dark ring for the knockout. Um, just a really solid start from us, um, and we were just able to really take advantage of some weaknesses in there. I guess, no, we didn't really use that Dark Electrode. We just, we were able to really get ahead on that Rocket Sneasley X, and he missed some key scramble energy, so very fortunate for us. All right, we have that Lynette's Net Search. It looks like we were playing against a Nitto Queen deck here. So I'm double checking that bounce is a may. So I want to have that turn two slashing strike. But it looks like TCG one is a little off on this and it's a mandatory switch. So I will probably need to turn in a support ticket for that. Yep, definitely playing against Nettle Queen here. We have the two Rockets Pokeballs feeling pretty darn good at this point. Yep, just gonna burn both those. We don't have a supporter, but we are uh, we are sitting pretty good. So we can do the dark electrode play. Um, we can switch the scyther and do that play. Um, we can rocket sneezily X and just drag off. All right, so we are gonna energy bomb here, and essentially. We're going to take that Pidgey prize and at the exact same time set up that Rocket Scythe 3X to one-shot a Nidoqueen Queen if he gets it into play here. He has Nidorina. Very, very slow start from our opponent. Very fortunate for us. The nice thing is, is we are going to be able to knock out that Nidorina. The yes, Seeker was an okay top deck from us, but essentially, yep, we're going to just Darkness Navigation for the Dark Metal Energy to retreat, Evolutionary Light for the Dragonite. We have that Darkness Trance. Now, unfortunately, it does look like we prize the second Dark Dragonite. But I am going to VS Seeker for the Lynette's Net Search, not only to help um, thin our deck out, but also to fill our bench a little bit, set up some different options. We got the Claw Swipe. All right, we're doing okay. We could still be in a pretty rough spot, though, especially if our opponent goes clutch this turn. Admin, I was so excited to see that. We had a dead hand. A little bit more live of a hand, but we still are missing quite a lot. Opponent goes clutch. We go Stevens. We miss the switch. 
And we have the second Dark Dragonite prize. This is this is so bad for us. We do slap that Desert Ruins down. Um, yeah, so we slap the Desert Ruins down, so all their Desert Ruins are dead cards. But at the exact same time, man, that is so unfortunate losing our lone Dark Dragonite. Um, playing two and no Retriever is definitely a weakness on the deck. Um, it's generally not worth it to play three, and I've played all right without the Retriever, but yeah, it's painful. Okay, we top deck the R energy. I think at this point I realize we're still shy. Okay. Yeah, I think we needed it to top the Dark Dragonite or um the dark electrode which we did we got very fortunate there um rockets pokeball was also an out um it was also very how do i want to say note on the dark electrode we used darkness navigation to grab the dark metal and leave the dark in the deck is we know that is going to be stuck there until we um um get the dark dark dragonite out of the prizes the plus side is, is i mean the argument for the r going for the dark energy would have been we could have gotten a rainbow and then moved it back hit something like Pidgeot for extra damage. So there's pros and cons to that play. Go ahead, we're gonna knock out the Nidal Queen. Yeah, that Rocket Scyther is always going to provide a um, prize on a Nidal Queen. They can't clutch lock it active because we're just gonna bounce it. Um, it could be susceptible to something like a POW hand extension, but I think he'd have a hard time even two-shotting it. Yeah, man, I do. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to bait the opponent a little bit here. I've got that rainbow energy in my hand. I didn't feel any pressure to play it down. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to darkness navigation for a dark energy and then play the rainbow. Uh, playing a possum here a little bit. I'm going to say there was pros and cons to this play. I do think I probably should have just burned the Rockets Pokeball there. It would have been much better. Yep. Putting two energy under that Sneasel EX. We're going to have some different options here. The drag off on the Feebas is a possible win condition for us. Opponent literally cannot play Nidal Queen anymore in this matchup. Yep. They're going to go for the Nidal Queen route. We're just going to retreat. That Rocket Scyther, take our last prize, which is the Dark Dragonite. A um, couple of tough turns in there. We were able to navigate, um, thankfully, pretty well. A little bit of a rough um, situation, prizing that second Dark Dragonite. All right, so we're going to play against another Nidal Queen deck here. Much rougher of an opening for us. Opponent plays with Steven's Advice for one. At this point, I'm thinking they've got a pretty dead hand. We just Steven's Advice for two. Um, argument to Rockets Admin there, but considering our opponent literally just didn't show anything, I didn't do it. Um, holding that Rockets Pokeball. Yeah, they do have the, the fast evolution. I think you could have made a real argument to Rockets Admin there. I don't know. Pros and cons. We are drawing very well, though. We're just checking it. We do prize the second Dark Dragonite again. Super unfortunate. We don't want to quite give up the prize yet. We are holding the Dark Dragonair, so essentially we do need to wait a turn. We know he's not going to be able to knock out the Catini. He's going to Steven's advice for four. A little bit stronger Steven's there for him. A um, couple of good draws for him there, the Nidorina, uh, the Nidoran, and then being able to get the Pidgey. Opponent's start isn't, like, he doesn't get, like, the quick Pidgey out, like, sometimes you, you see with Nidal Queen, but he is getting, setting up consistently, having us on the back foot. We're going a little slower here. I'm going to take the turn to get the Dratini and Rocket Scyther. We're going to go at Evolutionary Light here. Um, argument to get the Dark Dragonite there, we did not. Still missing that Rainbow Energy. Opponent, like I said, he's not doing anything super impressive, but he's he's just setting up nice and slow. 
we're not really forcing him. We're not really putting that pressure on him to force him to do anything. No, we did get that first Desert Ruins down again. Um, it's going to put us in a pretty strong spot. Debating the energy attachment. Um, I'm trying to see. Yeah, I don't think there was any way we could knock out that Nidal Queen. I think even, um, missing maybe i think yeah i think maybe we had the cards to knock out the nidal queen and what are we involved like double switching double evolutionary lights and then like a rocket sneezly x um i would need a minute to think about it but at that point we would um we'd still be susceptible we'd lose basically everything to a second nidal queen and energy Okay, so we can knock this out. Yep, that's what we're doing. We're going to go ahead. Yeah, we're just going to retreat here. Um, argument to switch, but I, I'm trying to preserve the energy or preserve the switches. I, I think there's arguments to if we overvalue it or not, but... Yeah, there's pros and cons to it. I think in the early stages, you don't really put as much value on the energy, but maybe I should have there. Maybe I should have just switched to be safe. Um, my thinking was, though, if they go clutch here, I'm going to want, uh, I can switch and then Dark Electrode for the knockout. Yeah, I'm going to say in the situation we were currently in, the Dark Metal was fine. Or retreating with the Dark Metal. So, yep, we're just going to switch, retreat, play down the rainbow, especially if we're going to admin here. Uh, once again, I think we there's an argument to burn the Rockets Pokeball. Um, drawing the Dark Metal was highly unfortunate. We're just trying to diversify our energy the best we can. Um, I'm going to say that was very risky for us to put the three energy on the Rocket Sneasel. The argument being is we've already taken down two queens. If they do pal the Rocket Sneasel, um, then we are going to get a third queen. At the same time, too, though, I probably could have just left it with two. Like, I could have left... I could have done it differently. I was more concerned about the Dark Dragon I getting knocked out, but maybe, especially since we didn't, like, waste the Rocket's Pokeball, um, our opponent doesn't know the second Dark Dragonite is prized. I don't know. I guess that would be an argument not to play the Rocket's Pokeball, was that we wouldn't give that information to the opponent. Okay, opponent has the Nidal Queen. They are going to use a Quick Search here. Yep, plays the pal. Yes. We've lost five energy over almost nothing. So I think there's a lot of arguments. Yeah, I don't know. Still not during the second Dark Dragonite. Absolutely wonderful um, admin from our opponent. Very well played on that. But we also drew that dead Rockets Pokeball. Steven's advice, we don't really find much there either. Yeah, if we if we found a switch here. If we would have been able to find a switch, we would have been sitting so much better. Um, I'm gambling they don't play too pow. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that was a big, big misturn for us, not being able to knock out that Pidgeot. If we would have had the switch, knocked out the Pidgeot, and preserved the Rocket Scyther, I think I think that would have been a huge... That would have been, like, I'm pretty sure would have been a guaranteed win from that point.
Yeah, bring up the rack and save there. We are going to get that. Copycat was a great top. Um, I do think we should play the R energy here. Yep, that's what we're going to do. Um, yeah, we're just going to burn at this point. We do have two rainbows in the deck. We get a large hand size. Burn both the Rockets Pokeballs at this point. Pretty solid hand from us. Just go ahead, slashing strike for the knockout. We just do not have the energy in play. That is going to be our biggest downside. Um, just losing three energy to that POW and then paying two to retreat. Um, well, not necessarily bad. Um, they are going to really cost us here. Especially in this matchup when they basically have admin on command. You really, really, really have to... Um, have a lot of energy in play if we had the energy in play this game would be over and we just don't have anything at all i had also am going to point out that this is a situation where a um second rocket say 3x i think also would have done a lot of good for us yep we are just going to hope um it's a really small chance but we're basically just putting it all on that our opponent um prized the second um um Double rainbow energy. Yeah. Has that admin. Well played by our opponent on this, though. But yeah, we just don't have the energy. Um, copycat was a nice little addition. Yep, if we had the energy, we'd be fine. We're just gambling that they, um, yeah, prize the second double rainbow. But it was... It was it was the best plan for the situation. Relatively low odds, they prized that fourth double rainbow energy as their last prize. But um, that was our best chance to win that game, so we went ahead and took it. Um, I would say, as far as what cost us, I think um, prizing the second Dark Dragonite was probably the biggest factor. If I hadn't prized that second Dark Dragonite, I could have, I would not have left all three energy underneath of the that Rocket Sneasley X. They never would have gotten those three. Um, it was just a really tough spot because if I didn't set up a secondary attacker like that, um, they could have powered the Dark Dragonite and then gotten a free knockout there. Um, very, very, very rough spot for us. Um, and then I, I just... Other than that, they just played it really well. They had the admins whenever they needed them. Um, I think this matchup is pretty favorable. Um, we both got an okay start, and then I think you really have to keep energy on board um, and be able to diversify those. Outstanding power by our opponent absolutely won them the game there, but... Um, yeah, I think those were kind of the deciding factors in the game. I don't think, outside of that POW, I think it was just, you know, some little edges here and there um, that our opponent came out ahead on. But, yeah, very well played. Um, and that's going to go ahead and wrap up the Dark Dragonite, or the J Plays Dark Dragonite video. Uh, Dragtroad is probably the best deck in the 2005 format. Um, in my opinion, by a pretty decent margin. I don't think there's any matchup with this deck that I'm afraid to play or I don't like to play. I think I feel slightly favored against literally everything. It's just you've got to um, just play smart, manage your energies, and go from there. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope to catch you in the next one.